So, a big quarter of football here from the Sydney Swans, and they're doing very nicely. Sydney by eight points at quarter time. Not a lot of goal kicking, but this one here was just exceptional. The speed of Gary Rowan, the kick to set it up was also absolutely sensational. Cameron Ling is down there at ground level, been having a listen, a listen to the Sydney huddle, Lingy. Yeah, well, BT, you guys mentioned how well the Carlton were defending in that first quarter, only keeping Sydney Swans to 16 points. But the big thing was they conceded 17 inside 50s in that quarter. It's because Carlton are getting all their numbers back. Every time Sydney going inside forward 50, there is just congestion everywhere at stoppages. Carlton are bottling it up. They're getting a number behind the ball who's intercepting the footy quite often. Sydney need to work out a way that they can get through these numbers. They can't kick a winning score tonight if they're going to allow Carlton to get all those sorts of numbers back. They need to make sure they have some composure when they go forward. They lower their eyes. They use each other when it's stoppages like this. They're smart and they buy each other time. They can get easier shots on goal rather than rush ones like that. Big ask for Sydney now to work out a way through this Carlton congestion. Boy, sounding more and more like a coach every day, Cameron Ling, isn't he? He's got that real authority oh, about yeah. him uh, just at the moment, Ling. You know, I like it a lot. He's um, points right. They've defended very deep Carlton and they've been able to stop them scoring. That has been the issue for Carlton. They normally can see every second time they go inside 50 a goal, which means on 17 inside 50s, they could have conceded eight in the first quarter. Look at that, it was almost like an arrow all the way up the middle of the ground. Both forward lines decided to line up in the corridor. Yep. The old fishbone look about it. Start of the second quarter. By Brett Rosebury, one of the most experienced in the business game. 297 for him here tonight nearing the 300 mark. Here's Buddy Franklin, who was closely checked in that first quarter. Goods through the Dukes. Doherty. Jack in amongst it. Fast hands. Cunningham to Buddy again from the boundary line. Thought nothing more than centering the footy, and that's what happens when you do it, Lloyd. It's one of the great gifts of Buddy, isn't it, when he has been closely checked with Joe, or perhaps the ball isn't coming down the way he likes. He's so good up the ground. He gets up involved, he charged into that centre square and then worked back hard, a beautiful kick. Even when it's not his night, he always works hard, buddy. And eventually, if you do that, you're going to find yourself in the game at some stage because he continues to present, bud. So he's kicked five behinds in the last four weeks, has Jakey Lloyd. Here he lines up dead in front and he nails that one. So Sydney get their third. Another look at Buddy's kick there. Here we Just go. a great centering ball. This margin of the game here early in the second quarter. Beautiful bounce. Warnock did well in the ruck against Pike. Cunningham was in there. Mike oh, tries to help him extract, but Tui. Thanks, Zach. Subs tonight. Brandon Jack and. Of course, Graham, who came into the side this week for Carlton. Play on. And this has been the order of the night here so far. And I think this is Ronnie. where uh, Bristol Carlton Lance. like Lance. to think they could match Ronnie. Sydney. Sydney are brilliant at it. They're so tough in the middle of the, of the ground. But so too are Gibbs and Murphy and Play on. Jard. And Bell's a big, strong operator as well. So... They're going to back themselves in around the contest. Doesn't necessarily take skill, but it takes a lot of concentration to maintain it, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's going to be the question that's asked of Carlton tonight. We know Sydney have done it over and over and over and over again over long periods. We know they can do it. And Mick Malthouse would have been planning this way all week. Okay, coming in a bit. Time to run. Warnock and Pike, the two big men here. Judd and Kennedy are opposed to this stoppage. Holding his arm, Sydney. I read an article today, Lee, I think it was written by Mark Robinson, the Herald Sun back in Melbourne, suggesting that Chris Judd could extend his career by becoming a tagger. Do you give that any credit? Uh, that's a big call, but um, I, I think the fact that he... Perhaps almost everyone needs to lower their expectations a little bit with Judd inside. Well, he's not going to be a tagger, Chris, Lee. Chris Judd of six or seven years ago, but Chris... Chris Chard is still... Have a look at this one. 
Mark Murphy. That's got to hurt, doesn't it? Yep. Big man, Buddy Franklin. But I think Chris Judd is still providing so much to this team. His possessions are quality. He doesn't need to be getting it 35 times to do. Here he is, the tag up. <laughs> From the boundary line, a good centering ball. Casbolt slightly out of position. Gets an opportunity at the ground level now. Rampy did really well, gave him no space. We're talking, you know, will, will Judd go on next year? Mark Robinson's suggesting he plays a tag. He still showed a fair bit of burst then away from that stoppage, didn't he? So, if his legs hold up for the rest of the year, I think he can go around again. Tui, around the corner. Not saying that he couldn't do that job, because no. Judd could oh, do course. most things. He could, but he, he showed a fair burst of speed there, so he's still got some acceleration in his legs. Gee, still... that's a good kick from Melchesky yes. to Jenna. Let's watch him turn on the afterburners. Kerno on the chase. Does he wear him down? He corralled him beautifully, Ed Kerno, and he made him kick it. Now the young fella in Towers. Yep. Head over the foot. He did well. One at the boy from Colac in southern Victoria. Back to Jack. Jack, a centering ball into the hotspot, Gibbs. Tell you what, just Ed Kerno did really, really well right. there. Jenna put the bounce down. I man. reckon about 80% of players would have been in all sorts of strife, but... Showed a bit of his own Two speed nine. there, Kerner. Ross Two. Gibbs is having a pretty handy night. He's been opposed to Kennedy at times. Have a look at this chase. The speed. Uh, Jenna would Set think he six. could burn most guys off. Straight up. Probably thought Ed was more of an endurance operator, but he corralled him beautifully. Showed a bit of toe, Ed. Yep. Very good uh, middle distance runner, I think the word is. Is yeah. that the 400 metre, 800 metre, 1500 metre yeah, type runners, yeah, the middle good. distance? Very He's... athletic family, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant family, of course. Oh. Eliza Kernow, his sister, I think Commonwealth Games runner. Yeah. Um, fantastic athletic family. Oh. They are indeed. Here's Bell being chased by Laidler. Didn't quite get in. Pretty ugly kick, though. Due to the pressure, Henderson not sure what to do. Eventually pulled the trigger. Now Bell's got to get past one. He took him on. And fair enough. He had support Super. there, Bell. See when he gathers the footy here, he had Everett. And Johnson next to him, but just didn't make the right decision. Laidler to McGlynn. There are all the one-on-ones down the track. Great shot from our cameras. Short kick to Goods, made it tough for him. Goods. Sorry, Gibbs now. McVay. Should break Kerno. Goods looking for the footy there, didn't get it. Lloyd, the give and go. Now with Parker having a little trouble fan standing up. Rain has stopped for the moment, but it is a little slippery. Kick inside 50. Andreas Everett got a bad bounce. Did he attack it hard enough? Smith backwards. Melcheski. Richards. Sold candy to no one. Then Teddy. It looked damn good though. Now another speedster in Rowan. This time to the first gamer in Towers. Here is the boy from Colac. Pick number 12 in the 2013 draft. Off to McVeigh. Overlap bird. Sydney on a stroll here. Goods out in front. We'll look for Jetta. Got it to him. Did well. And they combine again. And did he just let it go? Yaron, there's speedsters everywhere in this game. Jeez, Kate Simpson was brilliant back then. A couple of really big efforts. Thomas and Rampy. Dale, I'm not sure about that. The little handball as well. And over the top goes Johnson. Good tackle from Sydney, though. Thomas has a second crack. Tui had an opportunity, looked one way, ran into a tackle as he turned the other way. Got a, he's got, the free. got a pace of respect for their attack with the footy, Carl. But really are cracking in hard. White, he finds some space for 40 metres out direct in front of the Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're having a real dip tonight. And their skipper was outstanding. He's what you, what you were talking about, Dust. Yeah, just the pressure of Simpson. Stood up twice, didn't he? It was almost a certain goal. They had one extra number down there, Sydney. And that's a big win for them to go the other way. And now White have a shot at goal, Richard. The skipper puts his head over it, draws a free kick. Simon White, he was really good last week. Kicked four goals, and I reckon he initially went forward to almost play a negating role on Dempster, and ended up hitting the scoreboard. Had to kick it from about the 50 line. Just inside. 
Distance not a problem, but accuracy is slightly to the left. Kennedy still going at 100% with Excellent. his contested right possessions. There, 11 disposals, 11 contested possessions. Thanks, right there. Hold on, Drace. Very professional outfit, Sydney. Never panic, or rarely panic. Down the line, Melcheski. Pike in front, Warnock did well. And they had to go back, and that brought White into the tackle. He did well not to get into the back of McVeigh. The Blues are forcing Sydney to kick long down the line like, like they just did then. Shut all the numbers out on the other side of the ground so Sydney couldn't switch. Jack, this is a, a real tight game. Can Carlton keep this going? Can they keep this pressure on for a long enough period in this game? Murphy to Judd. Judd again. Centering football. Here's Henderson. Used the body well. Off hands. Now Laidler. Pike just clears the zone. And fair enough. But Simpson got back and She's did well. Around the corner to Bell. They'll want it to go. Here it's in the like, pocket yeah. is Henderson on the lead, and he's got it. Oh, now that should be 50 as well. Or did he trip over? Gee, he got into him very, very late. Have a look at this. He's taken the mark a mile. Look, he's he's almost stopped flying, and then he's gone into it. Yeah, well, that would have that would have been 50 last year, no doubt. But 15 gone. They've relaxed on that interpretation. Is the one out there in the first quarter. They, the fingernail. Know what seen generally, yeah. You brush a fingernail last year, it would have been fist. Incidental contact, I guess. Henderson, high footy, who's the flyer? Couldn't get a run at it, Casbolt. To the big improvement of Carlton this quarter. First quarter, Sydney, 65% of that quarter was in their half of the ground. Carlton, 65% of this quarter has been in their half. So, huge turnaround for the Blues, but they need to capitalise. Big opportunity here. Well, Carlton. It's pretty Back tough to get a possession out of these stoppages, though. Lingy, a lot Back of numbers down there. White and Melcheski behind the play, going at it. In the goals where you see Grundy dropping off the footy to give some extra help back there. Yeah, Richo, a lot of numbers. Both teams happy to have plenty of numbers around the footy. Is it? Does Grundy just join in to help out his mate Melcheski? But very hard to score. Everett to Murphy. Murphy round the corner, out of bounds. 33 players inside Carlton's Ford 50 at the moment. Swans have been the masters at this, haven't they? They're great. Just getting everyone back, making it really, really hard to score. Into the goal square. I think the mark's been paid there to White, so White's had the last laugh in amongst all of that. That's your kick. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Inside the square. Outside. Come on. See, he just asked the uh, the uh, umpire upstairs just whether wait, that was inside right the score. Did he ask one of his mates? I'll get him on his ground, line, Kieran. Sure. Go right out. They don't have mic right communication, I don't think, Come the around. umpires. Keep coming. One more. Oh, that that's was it. intriguing. Mark's here. Gee, that's a tough angle from where he was. I thought he marked it right on the line. What do you do here, BT? But right, okay. banana. Uh, drop punt, I reckon, Richo. Drop punt. Yeah, just a drop punt. He's, he's gone around, lessened the angle somewhat, and he did well. So White kicks the goal. There's been a bit been going on. Simon White has a defensive forward role on Nick Malcheski, and they were just giving each other a little bit off the footy. So he did pretty well there, White. And John Longmire's responded. Malcheski's now playing on the wing. So they're really trying to get Malcheski's run back into the contest. I think he's coached well tonight, Mick. I think yeah. he's got some really good matchups and are working quite well. Looks like they've really honed in on this all week. And so far, they're uh, matching Touch. the premiership favourites. Judd having to work very deep in defence. A little while to get hold of the footy. Now McVeigh, which 
way do I go? Instead, the handball to Kennedy, who's on the run. Kennedy gets a look, a dribbler. He went the ground ball, and he misses. Turf that's been placed across the last line of defence there. Bell looking for running support. Allard was not able to keep his feet. A couple of occasions tonight, the Blues have had an opportunity to get out and running in open play, and they've just missed a handball, put the handball at their teammates' feet, or missed a kick. And that was one of those yeah. examples. Now Reed, look, he can go all the way here from 50. Uh, only half kicks it. Beautiful control and great poise from Reed. Back out here, guys. So if you're going to be a side that uh, have won 11 straight games, then you can't make basic skill errors. And I'm not sure the look away handball was, was needed. He could have just squared his shoulders. Look at Mick Moldhouse. He's absolutely going off his head because it's a five-meter handball. Just have to make it. The next stoppage, Reed goes uh, straight through the pack, kicks one from 50. And they train those quick hands so much in training. So, what can Carlton do here? You just get the feeling that things are starting to open up ever so slightly. Now, that's a soccer off the ground, surely. Not deliberate. Good call from the umpire. Just wonder whether they're just starting to lose a grip just a little bit here, the Blues. Two goals to one in the quarter. Still only a 13-point margin, so a goal and things can change quickly, but a goal the other way. Good kick, and Reed did Walker then. It was a nice kick to Reed's advantage. Yeah, hard to stop that. If the kick goes to the advantage of the forward. He runs around, plays on, and kicks the goal. So Reed opening this one up. Swans by 19. We wondered where the flow was going to come in this game. Well, it's come at stoppages for Sydney. This one, Parker on the move on the, the outside hit. Really good kick, really good use of the body for Reed, And goes back and slots it. Of course, Reed's previous goal was straight from a stoppage as well. Carlton have got to be careful. They can't let Sydney dominate that area. Two and, uh, two, and two minutes here for Sydney now. Doherty wanting the free. They go forward again. Kennedy so good in that. Close in play now. Jamison's got enormous pressure. Goods just got rid of him. Handball over the top. Little opportunity here. Reed for three in a row. He's got it. No, he hasn't. Yaron's marked it right on the line. This will be interesting. Clear. Let's have a listen. Back here. It's all clear for a score. Okay, so Yaron must have play fumbled on. it over the yeah, line. Yeah, well done to the goal umpire. You, I'm you. bothering with the review. I like it. Right there, Gary. If you got it right, <laughs> play on Thomas. So out of trouble there, the Blues. McLean was hoping that Andreas Everett had come at the footy, and our Channel 7 crew up close and personal with McLean. So Yaron yeah, only went about a metre and a half, so not going to be a, 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 a Mark Payne. So the correct decision, and Lingy nearly got cleaned up down there. He almost ended up in Lingy's lap. Brock. Oh. Always nice catching up with Brock McLean. Lovely bloke. Lingy, you get nervous, don't you, when the players come towards you down there on the boundary? Yeah, you try and put on a brave face like you're all cool and calm. But no, you're not. They're, uh, <laughs> they're, they move a bit quick and they're a bit too big and strong. I'm happy to not get hit by any of them. Hit Bruce like a grape now. Have a listen to that. That was one of the nastiest taggers. Oh. <laughs> they're running around and just... Get in everyone's face. He's not sure he wants to get a little bump now, V2. <laughs> Come on, and Richo just uh, yeah, Richo. going in there with no. his shovel nose as well. Oh, I mean, they have lost it, these two. Oh, Neville Link. He's <laughs> turned into a fashion statement, Richo. Up goes uh, Casbolt on to Kerno. Kerno inching kick to Bell. Was really, really unselfish play from Ed Kerno. Well done. And this is the one Carlton need to just stop the bleeding here. Just lost a couple of minutes of control, and this will help them get back into it. Bell must kick the goal, having said all of that. He's taken a long, most of his 30 just to get back here. 15 gone, said the umpire. Very generous. Wouldn't mind putting the clock on this one. I reckon he's taken a lot more than 30. 
Bell from 30. Right behind him. Riding at home with this one. And he has kicked the goal. Just sneaked in. The Blues have got all their A greatest in this centre bounce. They've got Gibbs, Murphy, and Judd with Casbolt so having a turn in the ruck. This big Warnock is off the ground. Around about 44, 45 seconds, I'm told, for that kick and goal. So he was extremely generous, the umpire. Thanks, boys. Right here. Come back. Play on. Pike. Judd. Play on. Off the back. Bird. As he so often does. Head over the footy, wing the footy. Back, and then get the free. It's one of these mosquito fleet that just is so consistent. Bird. Grundy. Lynching kick out wide looking for Lloyd. And Carlton have some success and lock it in their half of the ground. Longmire asking some questions of his coaches. He's directing that as Johnny Blakey down there. And Keep his they will look after the midfield potentially and just suggesting why that one isn't Play. going through the middle of the ground. Play on. Spun, still had the awareness to handball legally. Oh, I'm sure that one was though. Yeah, yeah, great tackle ball. from Bryce Gibbs. Gibbs. Really pinned Gary Rowan. Well, he's got a bit of momentum yeah, here at the moment, Richard. This man has been good. Yeah, got a good shepherd on the mark there as well. Gibbs allowed him to really have a go at it. Now, is this a free to Henderson? I think it is. Carlton oh. free, just a hold. So, Rosebury says a hold. I reckon Henderson will run around here. Well, he just had a bit of size on Rampy. Yeah, surely Ted Please, Richards has got to give him more back, space than that. that one, he's about three, me, four metres away. That's back, better. One metre. Hold there. So he's bringing him back to five metres. Henderson thinks this out. Aims to the middle. One. Two steps and around the corner. Well thought out. Really well done, the Blues. So here's the free kick to Henderson. And Rampy just... Here we go. Panicked a little bit because I think he knew Henderson had him done. And then the, as you say, the Stevie J invention. I think the Hawthorne boys got on it quickly after Stevie J with Roughhead and that as well. Pretty good at it. McGlynn out of the middle with a super clearance. Yaron wanted to take them on, realised he was hot from the back. Bird, sneaky handball, Parker a dribbler. An instant reply from Sydney. But this... This is where it all started again. Kennedy in the middle. That was his eighth clearance to go with 17 disposals. And he's having some sort of night. Yeah. Gets them moving out of the middle. Sensational stuff. Four goals to three in the quarter for Sydney. So things starting oh, to open Sydney. up. And there he is again. Not you. And a sensational ball to the real good foot user in Melcheski. Could not have stopped that as a defender. I thought Buddy almost had it. It was a fantastic go through, go through. kick go through. from Melcheski. Hasn't taken a mark yet, buddy. Out here. Been in a few one-on-ones. Jamison's held his own in those contests. Not looking flustered by it at the moment, is he? Kerno. Clearing kick. Henderson right up the ground. Johnny, one minute, hold. <laughs> Johnny Longmire having a hard time of it up there. Here's the... Good mark taken by Casbold immediately on the bell. So a fast footy into Carlton's 50. His hands rowing. They're like a vice at the moment, aren't they? They're, the, they're the best hands you've seen for yeah. a long, long time. Just the rest of the game, if it comes up anywhere near that level, yeah. he just goes clunk, Casbold. Yeah. I'll tell you what John Long might be most frustrated about, though. Both of his key defenders getting outmarked in one-on-one -on -one marking contests. He does not like that happening. He either likes help or he expects his players to win one-on-ones. Murphy applying the tackle on Melcheski. He's making an effort, so that's good. So Carlton piling on the pressure here again. Kerno quickly to Murphy, I think it was, around the corner. No mark paid here. You heard the umpire's call. It was clear. McLean wanted a free kick. Points to his face. Says too high. Rosebury, too experienced for that. Ignores. Thomas was on the move through the stoppage there. A la Kennedy. 
Judd. So they've done well, the Blues. 14-point margin of Sydney's advantage. Under four minutes to go in the half. Chris Judd in the pitch there, playing against Carlton for the 23rd time in his career. Sure to see that rivalry when he was at West Coast. Now an open forward end for Sydney. Boils down to this one-on-one -on -one contest. Really well done. The Blues got the numbers back there. It was Tui locked in battle with McVeigh there. And now Walker took him on. Bird was the tackler. Sydney got some numbers here at last. Murphy had trouble. Handball out the back. McLean. And now Gibbs gets a chance to settle the Blues. Or do they go? Well, he's had a crack at it. Tried to get through, but Thomas was caught behind. Now Grundy pursued by Thomas. That's a good tackle too. The ball's pinned in, and that's out of bounds on the fourth from Gary Rowan. Yeah, great effort from Dale Thomas there. He might have popped the finger, I think. He's come straight off the interchange, but... Oh, there. Just still hasn't been out of days to get those repeat efforts like he was at his all-time best. He's got one big one. And then it just takes him a bit longer. He missed such a big chunk of footy. It takes a while to... Really good point, that, that does, I reckon. Here's the man with just the big hands. Magnetic man. Casbolt with a good kick to Henderson. Gave him a chance. Pike arrived. Well, what uh, Nick Malthouse said to Lingy before the game, he's seen them like watermelons. He certainly is. Once he gets two hands on it, it's not coming out at the moment, Casbolt. Warnock at the back, trying to palm down to Murphy. One of the three for too high. Kick around the corner, looks damn good. Doherty it was, touched right on the line. Yeah. On. Should have the point of the elbow there from Parker, accidentally into the eye of Mark Murphy. He's still holding it a bit. Kick three in the Rezies last week. This young man towers, he's... A definite forward. And a bit of a shoulder issue earlier in the year. It's been an emergency four times, once this year and three times last year. Oh, there, Josh Plum. And getting a crack here tonight. Rowe was put under enormous pressure with a poor kick. But he did well to clear here. And get it out of the danger zone. So, getting down to the last two minutes, just under the last two minutes here. Please. Would not want to concede the Blues. Sydney are experts in these stoppages. Let's see what they can conjure up here now. Got some numbers. There's the stoppage expert in Kennedy. Will kick around the corner. It'll probably go over the line and out of bounds, as it does. Judd there in the gates waiting to come back on. You remember they gave away that late 50-metre penalty casbolt. 45 seconds to go in the first term. And now with a minute 37, again, this is really crucial. They can kick one the other way, win the quarter. Well, he's never right in this game. Bustling his way through. He's done a couple of nice things, Bill. Just that final disposal. It's let him down a couple of times. Thanks, mate. He's just a getter and a banger, isn't he? Hasn't quite got the finishing skills. That's a free to Mike Pike, I think. Done well on the free kick area tonight, Pike. I think he's had three. Interception here. Beautifully done from Yaron in board to Andreas Everett. Gee, Chris Yaron just loitering behind. I wouldn't Good like on. him to get on his bike and gone again and received. Casbolt will get a crack at this. He's coming from four Play deep, on. though. Off hands. On, Allard did well. Handball back inside. Pressure on Pike. Handball wide. Opportunity now for Smith. Time down under a minute. Here's Lloyd. Got to be clean here, Sydney. And clinical and careful. Still time to score. The kick was too low and bullet-like from Jack. And Parker's wrapped up here from Walker. So 36 seconds left. And the ball is basically in neutral okay, territory on the wing. Once again, I think when they're reviewing this game, Carlton, their ability to... Transition defend. When we say that, it's that turnover play to then find your man and shut the play down hasn't necessarily been Carlton's strength, Rich, but tonight they've done it really well. They have. Haven't really seen Sydney transition the ball from defensive 50 to forward 50 all night. Murphy up to nine touches in this quarter. 
Six of them contested possession wins. He's doing well. Time's going to run out here, I would suspect. One last chance. Ten seconds and counting. Henderson's got to have a catch here. Did well. Murphy to Henderson. Still time. This mark will count. He shouldn't play on from here. I think the siren's going to sound right now. Right now as Johnson takes the mark. Now, I saw Blaine Johnson, while well, you guys were doing a pre-show, in this very spot. He had about six shots with Mick Malthouse. And he kicked every one of them, I reckon. You often do, though, at training or before the game, BT. There's a bit more pressure now. So Johnson, 25 metres out directly in front. This would be a huge win for Carlton. Comes in, nails the goal, and look at them get around this young man, Johnson, Jeez. who kicks his first goal in league footy. I've come from everywhere. Look at that. What a time to do it. And what a finish to the half for the Blues. That'll give them the lift that they require. And at halftime, Sydney just seven-point leaders. 6-6-42 to Carlton, 5-5-35. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at all the big first half incidents as Lingy heads inside the Carlton rooms. Baz is at Footy Central for an update on the other game tonight between the Lions and Eagles. SCG, tight game. Carlton did really well in that second quarter to hang on. And as you can see, a seven-point advantage there for the uh, Sydney Swans here at halftime. Kennedy, look at that. 20 touches already in this game. Mark Murphy, as I said there, had nine touches in that second quarter. Six of them contested. Now, in the pre-game show, I said something that I regret and I sincerely apologise uh, in regard to Harry Taylor and anyone, and particularly Harry and any of his friends that were offended by my remark. I apologise for that and I sincerely regret any harm that I have caused. So, sorry for that. We're going to go to Basil Zemplis, who is at uh, Footy Central, and he's standing by to fill us in what's been happening around the country. Basil. BT, good evening. West Coast and Brisbane is the game that we're keeping our eye on, which is running simultaneously. That one up there at the Gabba. And uh, after a pretty impressive opening from the West Coast Eagles, they led it by 13 points at quarter time. They pegged them back and touched the Brisbane Lions. A strong second term, and it's really anybody's game at the half. Just a six-point game. Zorko and Harwood particularly good, and uh, Golby getting amongst the action as well. Of course, uh, that's in the absence of Rockcliffe and Redden. In fact, it's a game in many ways of not who is out there, but who isn't out there. A host of stars from both teams not available. Luke Shuey, though, a really good start from him. He's had a good three or four weeks, a couple of goals in the opening quarter and 16 disposals to go with it. So uh, they're in the game, the West Coast Eagles, as I mentioned. They lead it by six points away from home, a ground where they've done well at in the past, but obviously Brisbane undermanned and um, it's been, well, a bit of a shootout to be fair. There's been some incidents though as there generally is when these two teams get involved and uh, an interesting one for young Dom Sheed, a first year player who, well, he's working his way towards regular football and uh, well, Gatorade will be happy. A nice plug for the sponsors. And uh, he split the middle, really, right down the middle. No problems there. Everything is OK. Let's have a look at today's other scores. A really interesting day of football. And uh, three games that we had our eyes on. Firstly, at the MCG, Geelong just too strong. They really powered away. They have an average winning margin of 71 points from their last nine straight. They've made it 10 straight. Hawkins 3-1. The Kangaroos down there in Tassie. Thrash and Kilda by 59 points, but the really big win without 
Gary Ablett for the Gold Coast Suns. The Western Bulldogs getting their sixth win of the season. Jack McRae becoming the youngest player to have 43 disposals in a game. It was a sensational performance. Uh, he's only 19 years and 343 days. And wonderful scenes at Kazali Stadium. The Bulldogs, their sixth win, as I mentioned. Gold Coast, a top eight team. No Gary Ablett, but still no excuse for them. It was pretty level at three-quarter time. And uh, to the Western Bulldogs' credit, they powered away in the final term. A really big character building victory for them. As I mentioned, a bit of action down there in Tasmania. We'll have a look at these two. One of them over 13,000 test runs. The other pretty handy batsman, about number six in the first 11 at school. A handy leg spinner. But I'm told on pretty reliable authority, i.e. his brother Haim, that he had a weak arm from the weak field, uh, from the outfield. Sorry, Gil. Uh, that's the information that we get. Ricky Ponding and Gillan McLaughlin chewing the big topic. So there we go, guys. Footy Central keeping our eyes on the game between West Coast and Brisbane up at the Gabba. Back to you. Uh, very nice work, uh, Basil. This one here, tight one, Richo, as well. Seven points. Yeah, the Blues have done well. They've been able to shut the Swans down in their transition, and they're right in this game at half-time, BT. All right, well, Lingy's down in, the, in your favourite rooms, the Carlton rooms. Lingy, what do they have to say? Just down here in the Carlton rooms, really happy with the way they finished that quarter. Obviously pretty excited with Johnson's first goal in AFL footy. It's pretty calm now though, just the coaches talking to the players. They'll go through their routine now. They know it's a massive second half of footy coming up. Sydney Swans are a good team, but if they can replicate that first half, just improve on it, just build on it, they're well and truly in this game. Yes, uh, and uh, of course, uh, it's some interesting uh, highlights with Josh Kennedy as well. In that first quarter, Richo was absolutely on fire, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. His first uh, 12 possessions, I think, were contested, and he had eight clearances up until half time. That's his strength. He operates in confined spaces, he releases teammates with his, his brilliant stoppage work. And have a look at those numbers at half time 20 disposals, seven score involvements, but the eight clearances. He gets the ball moving the Swans way and he's had a terrific evening so far. He is the stoppage king, no question. So good at it, on the move and does such a good... How have you seen Buddy Franklin's game so far tonight? Yeah, he hasn't really been able to get into it. I think the Blues defence, they've tried to get numbers back and get around Buddy and I think Rowe was on him for a period of time, mostly Jamison though. And In the one-on-one -on -one contests, I thought that the big Carlton defenders held their own. Franklin was only able to take one mark for the first half. And when he did have a chance to take a contested mark, he wasn't able to do that. But you know Buddy will work the game out. He'll run for the full four quarters. And you know he can kick five goals in a quarter. So the job is never done on this man until the final siren. No, he's, uh, he's certainly looking like he's involved. He, you know, he, he looks like he's playing the consummate team game. If he's yeah. not marking the ball, he's still involved in the contest. Yeah, he's had 17 tackles in the mm. last uh, three weeks. So he's doing the small things as well. Hey, they've got a new president at Carlton. Sam Lane has been out and about and caught up with the man himself. Well, Mark, we know you're a lifelong Carlton supporter. We know you are the new club president. But who are you? What else do we need to know about you? Well, Sam, I'm, uh, I work uh, in a company called Crawford's Group. I'm managing director of a company called Crawford's Group, which is involved in uh, property investment and development. Uh, and uh, I live in Melbourne and I'm married with uh, three young boys. Sounds very good. Now, we know we're looking for a new CEO at Carlton, yes. but apart from that, what's on your immediate agenda? Uh, the most important thing at the moment is, is uh, finalising where we play a majority of our home games, so whether that's MCG or Etihad, and uh, I hope to be uh, in a position to make an announcement on that over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the next priority is about how we bolster our recruiting and uh, improve our development of our players. And how far away is the CEO's announcement? Oh, look, we're running a process, so we appointed Egon Zender to run a full process. We're not going to be rushed in our decision. Uh, we will look for the right candidate, um, and I would hope uh, sometime over the next uh, month or two we'll be able to uh, announce who our new CEO is going to be. And to footy matters, Chris Judd has been spoken about in recent days by Mick Malthouse. Now, as president, will you be encouraging Chris to play on next year? Sam, I'd love Chris to play on forever, but uh, the reality is that's Chris's decision. Um, whatever decision he makes at the end of the year, we will be supporting. And, uh, you know, again, he's a favourite uh, son of Carlton and uh, he is... Um, uh, He'll make that decision when he's ready. 
Well, Mark, thanks for your time tonight. It's great to put a face to a name and hope you enjoy the second half at the SCG. Nice to meet you, Sam. Thank you. See you. Our new Carlton president, Mark Lajudice. He's got uh, big, big, sho big shoes to fill after uh, Sticks Kernahan's had the he, job, that's for sure. He has indeed. Hey, Richard, the ladder is interesting given the fact that Gold Coast, uh, unsuspectingly, I suggest, got beaten today by the Western Bulldogs. Yeah, well, the Crows obviously went down last night. The Suns had a chance to put, you know, eight points on that team in ninth position. They couldn't do it. The Western Bulldogs were absolutely sensational up there in Cairns. And of course, Collingwood, if they can beat Essendon tomorrow, they can join North Melbourne on 40 points. And have a look at Sydney. They sit on top of the ladder, all clear. That is the live ladder as it stands right at this very moment. We're going to enjoy a break. On the other side of the break, we get this one back underway. The bounce of the ball for the second half here at the SCG. So don't breathe.